Hello, welcome to my class on PVC pipe bows. I'm Nick, and today we're going to be taking a PVC plumbing pipe. This is a one inch plumbing pipe, and using heat and some different shaping techniques, we're going to turn it into a bow similar to this one. This one pulls 45 pounds at 28 inches. The bow we're building today is going to be about 50 to 55 pounds at 28 inches of draw. To get this, we're going to be using a 1 inch pipe cut down to 56 inches long. If you wanted to adjust the weight or the draw length, every 2 inches that you add to the length of your pipe will decrease the weight of the bow by about 5 pounds. And every 2 inches that you take away will increase the weight by about 5 pounds. So for this one, it's at 28 inches, and then I've marked two and a half inches out from center in both directions. So this is a five inch section, and then another two and a half inches on either side for a total of 10 inches here. And this will become the entire handle section. A wide handle section like this offers more stability and tends to decrease hand shock in a bow design like this, which is really nice for one inch pipe bows, which tend to have higher hand shock. You'll also want to mark four inches from each end of the pipe. So just to give you an idea of what we're aiming for, we're going to be using heat to shape this pipe into a bow like this. All of this is just going to be heating and shaping the pipe, pressing it in different ways to create this handle section. This 10 inch handle section offers a lot more stability, also offers some nice places to attach bow fishing mounts and other accessories. Here we have the limb. And then the tip here is folded over so it's the single piece of PVC all the way through. It's a very strong tip design. So this is a flattening jig and this is what we're going to be using to put the main taper into the limbs that will allow the bow to flex evenly and to work like a bow. So this is basically two two by fours. It has a section down here to help align the board, though that's not necessarily. All you really need is a single two by four or their board and something to set a space up here that is one inch tall. Here I have bolts, so this is adjustable, but one inch blocks or even cutoffs of the PVC pipe that are an inch tall can be used as spacers just so that the handle can be set at a certain length. And the way this works is the pipe will be heated up, placed in here, lined up to where we want to start the taper, and then press down to the end. So now we're going to start heating the pipe. I'm using a fire as my heat source, but you can use a stove top, either gas or electric, or a heat gun. Most hair dryers do not get hot enough to be used for this, but a simple heat gun from the hardware store or any stove top will work if you don't have a fire or a barbecue or something else handy. I'm going to be heating from about this mark here, which is the second mark on the outside with the center being here, from about this mark all the way clear to the end. I'm going to heat the pipe as evenly as I can, turning as I go. After about five minutes, you'll see that the pipe will be very flexible and will start to droop down and into the fire. If you have a broomstick or something like that, you can insert it through the pipe so that when you're working on it, it doesn't droop and flop all over the place so that you can have a handle on it because the pipe will get very hot. I'm not using gloves or any other safety equipment. But if you've never done this before, I highly suggest you use gloves or oven mitts or have a towel on hand as this will be very 
hot. It takes at least 180 degrees to get PVC flexible and the outside surface of this pipe is going to be a lot hotter than that. If you're going to do this indoors, make sure the area is ventilated and I do not suggest that this be done around any pet birds as birds have very sensitive respiratory systems. So the key, the key is to just keep the pipe moving. It takes about five minutes to completely heat up. Uh, for one inch pipe, especially if it's cold, it can take longer than that, up to 15 minutes, especially if there's wind. So if you can, try to do this in an area that's protected from wind. So when heating the pipe, it's important to make sure that it's always moving. If you keep it in one spot, it can burn. And when the pipe burns, it's very noticeable. It'll start by turning yellow in a spot. It will look um, more glossy or shinier than the surrounding plastic. Um, a worse burn will have a black center. And the pipe at this point isn't really usable for making bows anymore because it'll be too brittle that spot will be a weak point so it's really important not to burn it plus a lot of toxic things are released when pvc is burned so i try my best to avoid that and just keep it moving and when you're using a fire like this especially one that's putting off a lot of soot the pipe will turn dark but that doesn't mean that it's burning So I've got this right in the middle of the flames, I'm not worried about it burning the pipe just because I've got it moving. When you're heating the pipe, concentrate mostly on the end and the center. These two areas tend to not get heated up quite as much as the area near the handle. And you can see that the pipe is starting to droop. It is getting much softer. Now I'm going to touch the pipe. One way to tell if it is soft enough is if with simple finger pressure you can get both sides of the pipe walls to touch. It is soft enough. I highly suggest that you use gloves or a towel or an oven mitt for this. But you can see I can squeeze it and touch it to the center. So this pipe is hot enough 
Just make sure that it's soft enough at the end and up near the handle. Now I'm going to bring it over to the flattening jig. Right, so I line up the end of the pipe with the end of the jig, place the bolt right where the second line away from the center is, and then I apply body weight. It takes about 150 pounds to really press a one inch pipe. All right, so I'm gonna hold this here for about five minutes, and then we're gonna check and see if this is cool. Here it is. Everything looks good. The limb is straight, and you can tell if it's straight by looking down and just sighting from handle to tip. It's okay if it wobbles a little bit. PVC is really forgiving about that. So the limb doesn't have to be perfectly straight. It can be a little curvy. As long as everything lines up, it's all right. So you can see this limb has a nice taper, it goes from fairly thick here to nice and thin at the tip. The tip is not completely touching, you can see there's a little bit of a gap and this is okay. As long as the gap is the same on both tips, this side and the other side, then the bow will be even in its flex. And the flex, or the uh, evenness of the flex, comes from this taper. So as you put more pressure on the end here, this whole limb will flex evenly instead of flexing in just one spot. So now I'm going to heat up this side and once it's completely soft I'll put it into the jig.
when heating up the pipe like this, it's sometimes easy to have a spot that isn't completely heated while the entire rest of the pipe can be heated. And this can create areas where the pipe may look creased or rippled when it comes out of the jig, or it may not flatten completely in a section. So it's just important that the entire limb is completely heated all the way to the handle line and a little bit beyond that. So now it's time to put it into the jig. Place the bow in and everything up. So the center, second handle mark. Apply weight. And another thing too is just to make sure the other limb is lined up so that it's not crooked that the bow lines up through both limbs. You just don't want them to be twisted. All right, let's see, it's looking good. All right, so now I'm going to heat up the handle section from here all the way to here. And we're just going to heat it up until the pipe expands to its original shape. Once this bow is finished, if you were to heat it up completely and evenly, it would return to being a pipe. So that means at any point, if you feel like the taper isn't even or something needs to be reheated, it can be reheated, just as long as the pipe isn't burned. So you can see it's getting really flexible. And it's almost fully expanded to the marks. Daddy, can I go to your class if I want to? Yes, you can go to my class. You're, you're in my class right now. Here it is, making a heavyweight PVC bow. So now that it's completely pliable, I'm just going to press from one handle mark to the other so that the pipe is approximately one inch thick. That will make a nice handle, and make it thin enough so that an arrow can pass very easily. And again, I'm using bare hands, but it's a good idea to use a towel or gloves. So here's the handle. It's got a nice shape for the hand. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat up the last four inches of this just until it starts to puff up, and then we're going to fold this to make reinforced tips for this book. Now I'm going to heat up the end of the pipe. And when you're heating up something that's already been flattened, you want to make sure that you don't overheat the edges 
You want to mainly focus on the flat faces, otherwise the edges can crack. Now, if this is your first time making a PVC bow, you can go ahead and skip this step and just cut notches into the tip as it is with just a little bit of shaping. But what I'm doing just takes the same sort of tip as this and just makes it a little more visually appealing and a little stronger in terms of durability. So now I've been able to pull the crease longer and fold over more of the tip. So it's about where I want it. So in the next heat, it's going to be pressing this to its final thickness and starting to bend in a reflex here at the tip. So now I'm pressing it and pulling it forward. So this is a reflex, which means it faces away from the archer. This portion here is the part that faces the archer. I'm just going to press this as close as I can. That looks pretty good. Bring a little more flex into it. Approximately two inches of reflex, which means measured from back here. This is two inches, so I'm pretty close to that. That will increase the performance of this bow. And it does that by isolating where the bow can bend. This section, which normally would bend quite a bit, will no longer bend. It also changes the string angle. So that looks good. Looks straight. I'm going to heat it up just one more time so I can get this just a little more narrow. So, to get a little more leverage, I'm just going to squeeze this between my palms so I can get them as close together as possible. Alright, so is it filming? Yes, it is. Okay. So, here's the tip after shaping. You can see there's about a quarter inch gap all the way down. This is a nice, solid, very strong tip. Now I'm going to heat up this area right here, just to flatten it a little bit, blend this out. When you're doing this, just be careful, because if you heat up the very tip, you will undo everything that you've just done. Now it's soft enough to where I can start pressing everything. Alright, 
So here's the tip after shaping. And I'm just going to heat up the other side and copy this as closely as I can. So when you're doing the second side, it's important to make sure you know which side you're working on and which direction it's going. Alright. Start bending it. Most of it. Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to hold this over here on the side with the towel until it's set. Alright, so now I'm using a carbide file. This is a half round carbide file. Any half round file would work. And I'm going to cut down through the first layer of PVC and just into the second layer. This was where the string will attach to the bow. All right. So that's deep enough. I'm going to do that on the other side. And we'll string it up for the first time. So I've gone ahead and tied an overhand knot in this piece of paracord, place it on one string knot, bring the string to the other side, pull it as tight as I can with my hand, measure down four inches, and that's where I'll start my loop, and then I'll just tie another overhand knot. And the loop is just big enough so that the pipe can pass through. So I slip this one down. Put this one on. Bye. And I'm going to put the string on by stepping into the bow with the center of the handle resting against the back of my leg. The inside of the tip against my leg. And I'm going to push. Big gun. There. There it is. So let's see, this side is bending more, so this will be our top limb. And the center is right here. So. There we go. Alright, so now we can go on to the next step. Alright, so now I'm going to use a rasp and just clean up the back here, smooth everything out. Mm. Mm. So now I'm going to start painting the bow. I'm using a craft acrylic paint. This stuff goes on really easily, really easy to apply. You can put multiple layers and blend different colors. So I'm going to be doing two different shades of green. I've gone ahead and taped off this section here for a nice glue line. This is going to be uncovered so that any paint scrapes or paint wear from the string doesn't happen. I found that the very ends of the bows don't tend to flex and so I'm not really concerned about covering them with paint, which is something that's more important for the areas of the bow that do flex to protect them from UV damage and degradation over time. So I just take my brush and just begin applying paint to the whole bow.
I find if I just use random overlapping strokes like this, I usually get a very nice pattern that looks reminiscent of wood grain when I'm finished. So I'm not really going for an even coat. I want the bottom coat to kind of show through in certain areas. So I'm just going to keep covering the bow and then let it dry again. So here's the bow all painted up. Now that the paint is dried, I'm going to go ahead and wrap the handle. I've gone an inch and a half from center and I'm using a piece of leather lace you could use paracord or any kind of wrap to do this. Okay, I'm going to overlap this side a few times. Just make sure everything is lined up as I go. After about, f after about four wraps, I pull the end tight and then fold it up and wrap under. So I'm going to wrap for about four to four and a half inches. So now I've wrapped down to the end. The last four wraps I've left intentionally loose. I'm going to pass this end underneath the wraps. Bring it up. So now that I've got this under here, I'm going to go one wrap at a time and tighten everything up. Now I'll just pull it through. Pull the top and the bottom tight. And then There it is. So now we're going to make a two-ply counter twist or Flemish twist string for this bow. I'm going to be using artificial sinew. This is polyester artificial sinew. But you can also use any other bowstring material like B50 Dacron or anything like that. So I've gone ahead and made two bundles of four strands each. And that comes to about 440 pounds of working strength. So that's plenty strong for this string and it comes out to about an eighth of an inch thick when everything's twisted together. So to get this string length, so to get this string length I measured from one tip of the bow all the way to the other and then I added about 18 inches of extra length for the loops and everything else that we're going to do. 
I'm going to start at the top with my two loops. I'm going to measure out one fist meal, or about six inches. And then from there, I'm going to fold it over to how large I want my string loop, which is about an inch and a half. I'm going to take these here. I'm going to start twisting. It doesn't matter what direction you twist in, but I'm twisting counterclockwise. It just matters. It doesn't matter which direction you twist as long as you twist in the same direction. Then when you bring the two together and twist in the opposite direction that you just twisted, the loops will stay together. So I'm just going to measure. That's about where I want it. So now I'm going to match the two colors up. Figure out where everything comes together. So now, first we were twisting everything this way in this direction. Now we're going to twist everything in the opposite direction. About five or six twists. I'm going to do that to this here. Then bring them two together. Twist them together. Once all the twists are gone, I'm going to twist an additional about five or six twists. And do the same to this. And then, doing the same thing we did for the loop, working a little at a time. And then you just start twisting, twisting, and then turning around and twisting the whole loop. And that will create a strong counter-twisted loop that will not unravel on its own. And I give the loop a few more twists. Right. And I give it a few more twists after the ends. Go back to the ends and just pull them tight. And I'll trim those later when the string is under tension. And here is one loop. Now we're going to start on the second loop. And to do the second loop, we're first going to start twisting, doing that same counter twist that we did before, into the string. Start with about 10 twists right here, and then come out to the ends of the string, and then I like to do about 50 twists. That way the string will not come apart on its own. So once I've got all the loops, I put the strings together, and just counter twist them until they stop wanting to move. It's about there. There's the string. So I'm going to take the bow, place the loop on one knock. That's perfect. Make sure it's lined up. All right, I'm going to bring this down to the other side. I'm going to measure four inches from the end of the knock. So from the inside of the knock, I'm going to measure four inches. And this is where the end of the loop will be. So now we can start making the other side of our string. Here's the end of the string. Now this is the loose side. This is the side that is attached to the other loop. 
I want my loop to be about an inch and a half long. So I'm going to start from this side. Do the same thing we did on the other side. And begin twisting in one direction and make sure it's the same direction you used on the other side. Once you pick a direction, you just stick with it for the whole way. Otherwise, the string could undo itself. So that's twist in one direction, twist in the same direction, and twist them both in the opposite direction. Okay, so now that the loop is the right length, I'm going to go ahead and unravel a bunch of this. Just untwist it. What I usually do is untwist it to the point where I can put my leg through to hold this back while I work up here. So you can see Everything is twisted hard in this direction because of that counter twist we put in. So we're going to untwist all of that until it twists in the other direction. Give it about 10 twists. Hold on to that. Do about 10 twists in the loose end. Put them together. Now twist them in the normal direction. And once they come together, do about six more twists. Put that on the side. Do the same thing here. Okay, so now I just start twisting in the loop. So now that it's getting pretty close to the end, I'm going to take it off of my leg and just try to match it to the other loop. So just a little bit longer. The ends are pretty close to being trimmed off, so I'm not going to deal with that one or this one. Just work on the main parts of the cord. And then pull the loose ends through. Okay. Pull the twist from one side to the other to even it out. And then just let it twist together. And there's the string. So now I'm going to put it on the bow. And we'll see how it looks. Alright, so now that the string is under tension on the bow, I've gone ahead and wrapped some of this black artificial sinew on the center as a serving. And this is to help with string wear. So what I'm going to do is go over as if I'm wrapping the inside of this section here, bringing the 
spool in. I'm going to do that about six times. Then I'm going to take this, place it under this string, pull this all as tight as I can, and then start wrapping over this portion here. So now that I've done all the wraps, just pull this end through and tighten it up. There we go. I'm going to cut off all the loose ends and the string is finished. Alright, here's the bow all finished up. Now the last thing to do is to weigh the bow. To do that I'm using a luggage scale and I'm going to draw this back to 28 inches, which is a little past the corner of my mouth. Alright, and that is getting me 53 pounds. So once this bow is completely settled, after about 300 hours or so, it'll probably drop down to a little over 50 pounds. So here it is. I hope you enjoyed building this along with me today. And if you have any questions or anything you'd like to ask, please ask in the comments below. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Echoes online. See you guys later. Bye.